I didn't come in looking like this. I got wrecked in worship, and I'll tell you what the Lord said. I'm loud. Can we bring it down? What does that mean? You're saying no. No, you can't bring it down? All good? Okay. So, while we were in worship, the Lord had given me a word a few weeks back, and... I read it, read it again, and I said, okay. Then during worship, he says, there's a famine in the land, in the church. He says, our tears will be the rain. And I fell into a deep conviction. I mean, I don't think I've felt that in years. I'm still shaking from the power of the deep conviction because we're in a famine. We are, we're not past this famine. And the only thing that will save the church is our tears. The word came from Haggai chapter one. Verse 2, this speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, the people says, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house shall be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in panel houses at this temple to lie in its ruins? I don't know why today I felt like counting attendance. I never do that. We know it's not about numbers, but it is about the people and I'm concerned. Look, I'm still shaking from the power. I'm concerned. So I began to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I start counting and I don't know why the Lord had me count. I never count. This says, now therefore, this says the Lord of the host, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. Is this not a condition? This is not a condition for some of us. You eat. By the way, this was not part of my message. We're on Haggai chapter. We started on two and now we're on verse six. Yeah. You have so much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. He who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. This says the Lord of holes, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain, bring the wood, build the temple that I might take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, but indeed it came to little. But when you brought it home, it blew away. Why? Says the Lord of hosts, because my house is in ruins while every one of you runs to your own house. And therefore the heavens above you withdrew the dew and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called forth a drought on the land and the mountains on the grain and even the new wine, the oil and whatever the ground bring forth on man, the livestock and all the labor of his hands. I called forth a drought. That was in my message. Two nights in a row, I had two dreams. And in my dream, I was sharing with the bishop one day briefly, I saw the power of God hit, just hit the church. We were in meetings and the power of God will hit like a, like a, and people were under the power of God. Can I tell you, no one was standing. Because when the power of God hits, you cannot stand. Two nights in a row. Then I had one dream. 
particularly with this house, which I won't share too much, but it was, there was a cultivation that needed to happen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 5, it says, because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, with a deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. So I wonder, is our living, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, has our living affected the power of God? Because he said, how we lived among you, when we preached the gospel, it came forth with power. I've been questioning God, how many conferences have I been to and I have not seen the power? How many church services have I come to and I have not seen the power? It says if we preach, you back it up in power. Not me. It says, God, if I come in your word and I preach, then I'm expecting his power. Not because of me, because that's what the Bible says. Bible says, I preach, he backs it up in his power. Right. Confirming his word. So we are in the restoration of the house. We're restoring the temple to what God always designed it for. And guess what? It does not look like church. It doesn't. This was something, and this might, might touch some toes because you don't know anything but what you were taught. This might look like something you do not know because it's been many places that you've gone to and you've understood the presence was there, but you couldn't comprehend what was happening. So you didn't stay in that church because you like the presence, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it kind of goes against my doctrine. Man doctrine. Though the presence and the word are married, but there's a disconnect with my brain and the doctrine. Why? Because it's a man versus God. I said, Lord, what are you going to, what are we going to speak about? What do you want me to deliver? He says, I want my people to know that there's a God opportunity for new apostolic ministry. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a new, there's a God opportunity right now. What season are we in? God opportunity. Yes, is there a famine? But my tears are sufficient enough, he said, to bring forth the rain. Because Holy Spirit is in the Bible. It says that the Holy Spirit pours out over the church like rain. Do you hear? We have what we need to cultivate the ground. God doesn't just doom and gloom. He has a solution, and he is the solution. He's saying, there's a famine in my land. My house is in ruins, but I've given you a God opportunity to rebuild again. So guess what? He's changing the face of the church. He has to. He's been longing to do this. He didn't want us to fall into famine. That was not God's desire. And don't you say this was a time of Haggai. Well, Ecclesiastics tells me everything goes around according to the sun. So if you do something once and we do it right, then therefore we wouldn't have to come back around again. So apparently, there's a, been a breach. If that wasn't so, then we wouldn't need intercession. Let's go to chapter Luke. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 21. Before we go into that, you can leave it up. I want to talk to you about what an apostolic church is going to look like. There's going to be many leaders. I'm going to tell you right now, 
there's going to be many leaders, okay? But every leader will come into the house with a, house with a heart that serves. That's what's the difference between this leadership. They're not coming in here for a platform. They're not coming here for a name. They're not coming in here to be famous. They're coming in here to build the house of God. There's going to be many leaders, all equal to one another, all equal to one another, each one carrying a treasure that is needed to build this house. Each one carries a piece of wood. Peter says that we are all living stones building around who? Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. We're building. We're building a church that is centered on Jesus, not on men, not on my ministry, not on my glory, not on my anointing, but on Jesus. This is why there's a difficulty. Why? Because before, all eyes were on me, and I loved it. And I'm not saying me personally. I'm talking about people who've been taking God's glory. I'm talking about people who have taken God's glory. You think that he didn't, if God could have stopped coronavirus, was he not capable? Was he not capable? You know, people are asking if he's so capable, why didn't he? Because he was tired of his glory being stolen. So he allows things to happen. We've had enough with church stealing God's glory. It's enough. Okay, we know this happened. Now we're in a place where we can't do business as usual. The land is dry. It's been dry for years. That's why many of us stay together in a clique. Because this clique knows how the Holy Spirit operates. And this clique kind of is a little dry, so I don't want to be there because I might get stagnant. Well, let me tell you something about this clique association. It's a lie. Why? Because my water should be enough to water you. And then when you're ready to water, you should be watering her. And there is no above. Holy Spirit is the same in measure in each one of us according to our faith. So you choose to divide yourselves. Now the house is in famine. Division. Division. Divide the water from the land. What will happen? Divide the water from the land. You're not, you're going to have dry land. The apostolic ministry is going to have a five-fold leadership. You're going to have the five-fold. We have not had that in a church operating in its fullness. As a matter of fact, I used to ask pastors, why don't we have what Ephesians says? We don't talk about that here. We don't talk about that here. Why? It's too confusing. Why? Because it was always a one-man show. It's for what? To begin to work for unity. Oh, I'm sorry, because see, a one-man show is already divided. There is no unity in me. There's a unity in us. Amen. There's a unity in we, but not in I. The work for the unity of the church, the restoration of all things, and the promotion of the kingdom of God. Why is everybody so offensive when you start talking about the kingdom of God? You, oh, well, that's, that's when Jesus comes to reign. True. But is it not bringing heaven to earth? Do we not bring heaven to earth? Is, that, is heaven not the kingdom of God? Do we not bring it to earth? Do we not bring full manifestations on earth from heaven's realm where they're bearing fruit all season? All season, they're bearing fruit. They're never out of produce up there. I'm going to read you this quote. Jesus is still looking for disciples that will take his gospel into the harvest fields. Unfortunately, we have a problem. Churches around the world have become ineffect ineffective in reaching the lost or the unchurched. 
our model in ministry, draw people into the building with every gimmick you can think of, is, is it working? Is it working? Okay. We need a better way. We need a New Testament way. We need an apostolic definition in the apostolic way. There's an anointing in the apostolic. The, but it's going to take a mind shift. We can't think like church. Apostolic ministry brings structure, apostolic definition, and order to the church. We cannot accept change by doing the same thing this year that they did that did not work last year to teach or years years and years and years okay people get bored at the church why because it's missing something jesus jesus building up okay so it says to reach here we go to reach to reach our cities for christ that's what an apostolic ministry does. Guess what? We're behind the walls. Apostolic doesn't think four walls. We think region. We think how can we, I am tired. I am tired of seeing people in need and sitting in darkness. I am tired. I'm not, it don't, please don't label me evangelistic. No, I am a witness to Jesus. I am tired. I don't want to keep getting cold and watching the numbers. Do you hear me? I don't tired with pulling up to the light and looking at all the ones who have not had an encounter. Then we're getting to the point where we're rolling up our windows because it's too many. And there's not enough of us. What can one man do? One, what? Jesus is one. He does money, but we can't. We can only do what he has said and given us the measure in doing. That's why everybody here is needed. I was okay if I didn't have to deliver a word today, please. I, I'm okay sitting and being wrecked. I love his presence. I love his encounters. But when there's a word, I want a hearer with a doer anointing. I want a hearer with a doer anointing. At some point, if we keep having church who only hears and never does, you will never have a church anymore. It will be a dead church. Because faith without works Apostolic gifts. Everyone here has a gift. Everyone here has a gift. Apostolic ministries have gifts, and they're going to bring the order. We're going to reach the cities. We need apostolic tactics for this. That means there's no time to play around and try to figure out how we did it the last time and how it worked. Okay. Okay. We can't say, well, last time we did it this way and we had this much and it was kind of effective. Excuse me, your old manna is not to get given to people. We need fresh bread. We need, a, we need fresh anointing. We need a fresh teaching. We need a fresh song. We need fresh, fresh. You know how you're going to get that? It's by staying with the one who provides the manna. So, building apostolic teams and companies of set ones. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't get to stay in the church. I don't get to stay in the church. There's seven mountains. Tell me which one you're, you're actually raining on. There's seven. Did he give you a business? Are you on that mountain? Are you raining with him? Are you taking it over? See, God gives his plan, right? We lay out ours, and we think we have it all ready. God comes in and says, let's do this. Let's go. You go, you do your plan, and God shows up. 
and wrecks your plan because his way is better, but only when your intention is about God. See, I'm not going to get rich for me. No, no, no. The wealth belongs to the Lord. I'm okay. I was okay with a little, and I'm okay with much. I'm content in any way, God. I don't really care much about the things here that are rotting. They moth. I love to watch people hoard things because it's sad. Do you know all these things are rotting in their little storage units and all these other things, and they're all rotting away? Give me who glory. Met a lot of people here in Florida. When I first started, I didn't know why God was doing that to me. And I was like, why do you keep doing this? I met a man who had seven warehouses. None of them had tenants. Just stuff. And I was saying it. he had a whole restaurant, all fabulous. I walked in, I wept. And I was just like, why are you crying? He's thinking, I want it. No, this could be used for God's glory. And it sits here in ruins. That's not apostolic. Instead of expecting the lost to attend a church on their own accord, we must get out, get them. This is how Christ, the founder of the church, taught the disciples. Go out into the highway, the hedges, compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Now, there you go, your third. This is why I was counting attendance. It reveals to me who's on the highway. Who's on the byways? And I love when people say, well, I'm not, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not called to be out there. Excuse me. You have a mountain that you should be there being a witness. You know what? Let's not call yourself an evangelist. Call yourself a witness. Because if you had an encounter that was pure from Jesus, there's no way you can hold him back. When you see someone dying internally, I'm going to hold Jesus back? This could be their only lifeline. I could, be, I could be that one moment for them where they're not going to commit suicide. Or how about abortion? Am I not that one moment to save a child's life? Just saying, God put us somewhere. What are we doing? We must learn how to compel the unchurched to come to God's house. I know that touches a lot of nerves. The unchurched. Well, I was not fully saved. I might have known of him, but did I have a relationship? No. Someone had to come. If we're going to see the glory, glorious church revealed that we need to change the way we are reaching the cities with the gospel. That is why we need to understand the apostolic definition. Apostolic churches are modeling different patterns for the ministry. Instead of doing everything possible to attract people to, to a church building, that they are training various harvest teams to invade their communities. That is what a ministry that is apostolic does. We train. But guess what? We're not for you to stay here. This door only revolves because we have new people we're training. In and out. Not because they're leaving offended. That's wrong church thinking. That's a man's doctrine. That's a man's doctrine. Someone taught them how to be offended. Because the Bible never teaches that. The Bible simply says, it says it. What does it say? It gives you the method of what to do when you become offended. Okay. Then that's the patterns we need to start taking. Instead of people leaving. Right? If they're going to leave, they're going out to, to hit the fields. The harvest is ripe. It's been ripe for years. I want to tell you something. And the only reason why I'm going to share is because it blew my mind. There's, an, there's a religion that goes out there every weekend. Okay. I'm going to tell you how many stories came up that they filed charges against them for child abuse. What am I saying? One of us could have been one of them that would have saved them from that. 
so they'll never come to Jesus because they preach Jesus too. They preach Jesus too. God's saying there's a God opportunity. What is your God? What is the opportunity? What is the opportunity? Is the measure of your responsibility. Wow, you mean to tell me that it's not my choice whether I take it or leave it? Yes. If it's of God, yes. If it's the enemy, no. See, but the enemy won't, he can't just open the door, honey. He has to use somebody. Okay? He has to use somebody. So, yes, not every door is God. But make sure that you're not missing out on a God opportunity. That's important. I'm not so concerned about the enemy because I have discernment. Okay, discernment helps. It gives you wisdom. It tells you when it's not of God. It's called Holy Spirit. It'll do a soft whisper. No, it's not Father. I even tell you something. Can I confess something? So the other day I'm driving. I gave somebody a hug. They're going through a situation, almost similar to ours. I get in the car. It hurts like this. Anxiety is trying to creep in. I said, no. That's not. That's not. That's not. This can't be right. And I start saying, God, I'm scared. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes in and says, that's not your feeling. That's the feeling from the other person you hugged. Break it now. And God comes in, I am the Lord, your God. I am the God of your people. And he starts screaming in my head, I am the God of your people. Why? Because this thing was already attaining itself into my, into my emotion. That's why emotions, we have to be careful with our, how we feel. Okay? Oh, but I feel. I, I don't like listening to music that touches dark emotions in me. I know God is powerful. A lot of the times I turn the lyrics around. I do that. Why? Because I don't want to confess something. Um, you're not taking me back. I've been delivered from emotions. I still love. I still feel. I still have feelings like everyone else, but I have self-control. Right? What, do we take self-control in our emotions? Don't, exactly. Fruit of the Spirit. Uh-uh. We have, and you know self-control is almost like the last one people want. They go through everything else. I have peace. I have joy. I have righteousness. But do you have self-control? Because you're running around like a chicken without a head. That doesn't, you know, double mind in all your ways. That's not self-control. So an opportunity, here's a few things. Okay, so I found a few opportunities that came up in the Bible. Cause one to happen or seek for one. This one's a warring opportunity. What just happened in the vehicle was a warring opportunity. All of a sudden, I was creeping down into this place of you don't know your God. And then God shows up and says, get up. War for your identity. Confess who you are. Confess who I am. And all of a sudden, there's a war. A silent war that no one knows you're having. Oh, I know people know about the silent war. Because God forbid you tell people you're by your weakness. God forbid. All of a sudden, you're not the leader that I thought you were. You're absolutely right. Just because you see me in confidence and strength doesn't mean I'm not weak. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, it's in my weakness I get my strength. So don't look to me as if I'm a mighty fortress. Because I'm not. But I know the God who is. And when I am weak and need my refuge, I run to my strong tower. That's the only difference about me. I don't run to make a 911 call to my friend. I don't call such and such. No, no, no. I take my battles to the Lord, and no one never knows. That's the difference. And that's how it should be. My battles are won at the Lord's feet. Now, can I get counsel? Absolutely. After I laid it at his feet. Because I need clarity. 
I don't need my emotions. I need the truth. I need the truth. I need sound word from God. The second is to pull along, go on one's way, move through, pass over, bypass. Guess what opportunity this is? I just, one more time. I'm going to go along my way. I'm going to move through it. I'm going to pass over. This is a missed opportunity. Now, it could have been God opportunity or it could have been a missed man opportunity. And that's fine. But if, if we don't know where to go, we need discernment. The church needs discernment. Listen to this one. There's an opportunity for uncultivated, fallow, uncultivated, throw down, hand over and give up. What kind of opportunities is a missed God opportunity? I'm going to tell you why. I got scriptures. Hosea 10, verse 12. So with the view to righteousness, that righteousness, and I'm using amplified version, that righteousness like seed may germinate, reap in accordance with mercy and loving kindness. Break up your uncultivated ground. For it is time to seek, it's time to search for the Lord and to long for his blessing until he comes to reign righteous and his gift of salvation on you. So there's some all uncultivated ground where God gives us an opportunity to cultivate it. You know that he told me the other day, honor cultivates ground. Honor, honor comes and cultivates the grounds. Do you know, those are, that's like one of the things that right now is in the back burner in the body of Christ. We have right, they have risen up a lawlessness in the body of Christ saying, no, 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 this is what the Lord is saying and it's connected to evil. It has nothing to do with goodness. It has nothing to do with truth. So we're using the doctrine to justify your wickedness. Let's, let's be people of, of, of the word of God and let's not leave people that way. Now, it's not to, not to cause a debate, but when the opportunity is, has risen, take it and feed the person truth because it is on your hands. Why? I gave you an opportunity. Here's another one. Find, reach, me, accident, accidentally obtain or achieve. This is a seized moment opportunity. A seized moment opportunity is when you have an opportunity to possess something. When do you have that? Almost every day. Every day you have an opportunity to possess heaven. It's a seized moment. You know, Jesus always says, find me while you still can. Find me while you still can. When he says that, there's going to be a moment where we're not going to hear. Find me while you still can. That's what the Bible says. I love Becky. I know she's looking for something. Favorable opportunity. You got a place, a place where an occasion happens. That's another opportunity. Occasions created for an opportunity. He does that too. Can I tell you where? In Genesis, in the beginning of time. I'm going to show you something. In Genesis chapter 20, verse 4 to 7. In this moment, Sarah, Abraham takes Sarah and says that that's my sister so that they wouldn't, right? So he says, go ahead, that's my sister. And, he, and Abraham knows, oh my goodness, like, if I don't do this, they're going to kill my wife. Everybody knows this. But here's what I saw. He goes on to say, Lord, he had this dream. He said, Lord, would you kill a people who are righteous and innocent and blameless regarding Sarah? Did Abraham not tell me she is my sister? And she herself said that that was her brother. Then he said, in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. Then God said to him in his dream, Yes, I know you did this in the integrity of your heart, for it was I. 
oh, I'm sorry, not me. It says, it was I who kept you back and spared you from sinning against me. I love these scriptures because it changes what we think. Oh, I'm sorry. You can keep me from sinning? Absolutely, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit God tells you over and over again, don't do it, don't do it. It's dark, it's dark. It'll take you back. Constantly warning you not to do something. Constantly. And here you are. You have a seized moment where you can obey. Guess what obedience does? Cultivates the ground. Right. Cultivate the ground. So if there's any foul ground in your heart, there's a time to seize it so that you can begin to cultivate it. Proverbs 10.5. Oh, and don't forget this last one, times and seasons. Preparing for a time, for a season of opportunity. Does anybody do that? All right, yes, because you know what I'm talking about. It says, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to prepare. So when the season comes, I'm ready. I'm ready. You can have massive amount of teachings you haven't even used yet. Why? Because it's not time yet. But when the season comes, I'm ready. Be ready. In and out of season, the Bible says. In and out of season. How? By being ready. Prepare. Prepare. Everybody's talking about all this stuff that might happen. Well, then if you're so concerned, prepare. Even if it doesn't happen, who cares? You're prepared. If you're so zealous for those natural things, then I hope we're zealous for the spiritual as well. Because that's more important. That's where I'm going to survive. Why? Because if I'm so in tune with God, there's no one that can come against me. The Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know what it also says? That under my umbrella of salvation, my whole household falls under it. Despite of what it looks like, I declare that. God, I see it. I know what's happening. But your word says that my house shall be saved. Oh, trust me, my emotions want to say, but no. If I do that, I lose my inheritance. This is what happened. We shriveled up into something that was not the true identity of Christ, and we lost an inheritance. It's time to claim that back. It's time to claim it back. So guess what? We are going through a testing of faith. You know why? Because it was sitting on a different doctrine. One that wasn't solid and true. So guess what, guys? In this season, we are transitioning. Can we go to the mountain of transfiguration? I believe that's in Luke 9. I want to show you something. And I was like, man, again, guys. Again, disciples, when? When are you going to stay awake? Because the person who is woke is moving, is shaking, is pouring out. The cup is overflowing. No one can hold me back from all that's in me. There's a dirt. You're a treasure. You're a diamond waiting to be seen. What do we have? Chapter 9? And I think it starts... Is that it? The Mountain of Transfiguration? 9? What? Where's my Bible studiers? I thought it was Luke 9. What is it? 928. So we're at 928. I want to end with this. 
Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James. Wow, he only took three? There was 12. Okay. And he went up on the mountain. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistering. And behold, two men talked with him who were like Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of this disease which he was about to accomplish in Jer Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him heavy with sleep. I just, re I just read it under uh, New King James Version and it was 33. No, 32. Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep. And when they fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men stood with him. Did you hear? He had to take you up to the mountain of transfiguration because these three needed to be awakened in order to change a nation. They were half asleep. They were heavy with sleep. Oh, come on. This is the church. They're heavy. They're naughty now. They're crumbling. And Jesus is saying, if you just come up with me, come up with me to the mountain of transfiguration, I'm going to reveal to you my glory. You know what happened to Haggai? I'm going to tell you who he was talking to. He was talking to a generation that once saw the glory of God. And then a new generation that did not see his glory. And he said, those of you who saw my glory, would you not teach this new generation how to build the house of God? Oh, come on. You, you got to wake up, church. God is saying, I'm going to pour out my power. But I need you ready to receive it. I need your mind ready to hold it. I need your body to ready to carry my weight of my glory. And it's saying... I took them up to the mountain. My face was changing before their eyes. I, saw, I thought I knew you, Jesus. But hold on, I'm looking at you again. Oh my God, your face is changing on me. Who are you? All of a sudden, you better receive this. All of a sudden. They're looking right through him. Nothing hitting. Nothing holding him back. I'm showing you who I am, all in my transparency, all in my glory. And look who else I'm with. I'm with Moses, and I'm with Elijah. I'm running with those who delivered you and poured out the Spirit of God. Look at the two doctors, your deliverer, and the one who pours out the glory. Signs and wonders and miracles. Who wants that mantle? Who wants the double portion? At this point, we should be asking for more. Oh, my God. Peter, James, John the Beloved. Peter, James, and John the Beloved. They come up, and he was saying they're falling heavy asleep. Probably the same people who were at the, at the garden and... He's like, really? Can't you give me an hour? My God. Heavy with sleep. And when they were fully awake, when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing. Lord, wake your church. Come on. Come on. Let's begin to prophesy in this house. Lord, start with us. You might think you're fully awake, but if you're not walking in this transparency, if you're not walking in his glory, if you can't see the men in Jesus, then we're not fully awake. We're not fully awake. Come on, worshipers, come on. Let's begin to prophesy. This is me too. This is me too. Why do you think I wept of deep conviction? It wasn't because, oh, everybody's in trouble. No, start with me, God. Wake me up. Wake me up. Wake me up. I want to see your glory. Wake me up. Oh, my God. Somebody help it. No, Bishop. Okay. So, Joyce, go help him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. 
Come on, worshipers. Come on. Come on. Let's prophesy. Let's prophesy. I want everybody who has the ability to prophesy to prophesy. Okay. Man down. Come on, come on. You don't have to stop. This is not a program. This is not a program. We're breaking programs. Listen, please, we can't do it again. We can't keep to can't be on the mountain with a program. No, 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 no. Come on now. Hearing what's that in your heart, Lord? What's that in your heart? Show me your plan, Lord. Show me my part. Okay, stay with declaration. I want to hear you declare that. Declare it. She's going to declare something. Come on. And the gun pain. Or you can't have a bubble 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 to you. Or else, the other thing, I thought, man, if I pop up, you have to go. Just decide to give us nice, too long, but then I take my appearance from court. I explain it to my usual stability. I'm out. I'm out. Just court. And I just say to her, who I am a puppet, please call her a great foe. But that's a two still. It's all a lot. Yes. 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 Worship him. Come on, come on, come on. I want to pray. Come on. I want to pray for you. Come on, come on. Prayer warriors. Come on. Get up here. Everybody up here. Get up here. Come on. Get up here. Get up here. Get up. Come on. We break. Come on. Come here. We break every generational curse off of you in the name of Jesus. We break the generational curses off of you from generation to generation. And we say that your life will be awakened by the Holy Ghost and by the power of God. Come on, everybody pray. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we release it now. We break that now in the name of Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Awake church, awake church, awake church. Awake church. Wake up church. Wake up church. Show us your glory. Come on. If you want to be made new, just come up to this altar. Come up. If you want to new, you want to be made made new, just get out of your seats and just come up. Let us pray with you today. Come on. Come on. If you want things, all things new. All things new. Come on. Come on. Get up here. Let God make you new. Come on. 